Hello kids, today we will be seeing the second video on chapter 17, Forest Our Lifeline and today our topic will be the uses of forest. Okay, so we will start. The first and foremost use of forest is the forest help in nutrient cycling. What do you mean by the term nutrient cycling? You know what are nutrients, isn't it? Those are the essential things which are required for the growth. Okay, so the nutrients which are required by the plant to grow, you call them as the essential nutrients. Okay, these nutrients the plant normally get from soil, from water and from air. So, all the elements which are required for the plant to grow, the plant will obtain it from air, water or soil. Now, how do these nutrients come to soil? It is by a process called as nutrient cycling. Okay, during this process of nutrient cycling, what happens? The living materials, okay, all the living organisms will be having different types of nutrients inside their body. They will be having different types of elements inside their body. By the death and decomposition of the living organisms, whether it be a plant or an animal, all these nutrients from our body will go to the soil through decomposers. Okay, now this nutrients which right now entered the soil will be taken up by the plants for their growth again. And remember in the last video, in the first video we studied about a food chain. The plant is a producer, the plant is, okay, the producer helps, uh, the, each and every food chain starts with the producer. So, this producer will be absorbing all these nutrients from the soil. The producer will be taken up by a consumer. Okay, finally when the consumer and the producer die again the nutrients will come back to the soil. So, this cycling of the nutrients between the living organisms and the non-living component of the earth that is the soil. Okay, this is the cycling between living and non-living. The nutrients are moving in between living and non-living things in nature. This cycle is what is called as nutrient cycle. Now observe the diagram, you will understand it more clearly. Okay, so in this diagram what is shown here? Here there is a tree which represents a producer. So there is a producer. Here, so here in this diagram the producer is represented by a tree. The producer, see the leaf of the tree is falling down. That means the dead remains of the plants. Okay, it can be anything, different plants, they will be producing their dead remains, will fall on the soil. So, when the producer dies, its dead remains will fall to the soil. Okay, then other than that, this producer can be consumed by a consumer. See, one more arrow is coming towards the consumer. The producer will be eaten up by a consumer. So, this producer can be consumed by a consumer. Okay, now the consumer will also die. So, the dead remain of consumer will also be there. So, the dead remain of both the plant and animal will together come to the soil. Can you see it? Okay, now what will happen to this dead remains? There is a group of organisms called as decomposers. These decomposers will convert, just read this, decomposers will break down the organic materials into simpler materials. And finally what will happen? The nutrients will be released into the soil. So the decomposers will release all the nutrients to the soil. Okay. Now what will happen? From the soil, these nutrients will be again absorbed by the plants for their growth. So, these nutrients again get cycled. So, the cycling occurs between living and non-living things. So, these are the living things and this is the 
okay these three are the living things and this is the non living part so the cycling of the nutrients between the living and the non living part is called as nutrient cycling and the forest help in this nutrient cycling okay so in a forest this nutrient cycling will occur so this is the first use of a forest right now i told you that these decomposers will convert all the dead remains of plants and animals into organic materials and it will go to the soil isn't it now this conversion as it is happening okay these dead remains of plants and animals will be converted into a dark colored organic material this dark colored organic material which is produced by a decomposer is called as humus so actually this humus is produced by the decomposition of plant waste only no animal waste is included here okay so by the decomposition of the plant waste you will be getting humus and you can see the color of humus it is dark in color isn't it okay so and this humus it is very rich in nutrients because it is actually the dead remains of plants only it is getting converted into humus so what all nutrients are there in the plant will be there in the humus also so humus is very rich in nutrients it help the plant to flourish in it okay and you can see a few decomposers few examples of decomposers which help in the process of decomposition see these are the decomposers different types of worms including earthworms then fungi an example for a fungi is mushroom variety of insects like beetles and all bacteria all these organisms which help in the process of decomposition you call them as decomposers so hope the first use of forest that is nutrient cycling is clear to you and all these terms are okay okay now we will move on to the second use of the forest now what is the second use of the forest our forest they act like the green lungs okay how do they act as green lungs what is the function of our lungs our lungs will definitely purify the air which enters into our body isn't it and the purification process is actually happening in lungs so forest is purifying the whole air of our earth so when the forest cover increases that much of air is getting purified every day every minute every second hence they can be called as the green lungs of our earth okay now just recollect two terms which we have already studied that is photosynthesis and respiration you remember these terms what is photosynthesis the process by which green plants prepare its food by using carbon dioxide water sunlight etc and you know after the process of photosynthesis one gas is released out isn't it what is that it is oxygen after photosynthesis there is a release of oxygen and this oxygen is the gas which is used by all the animals for respiration now what is respiration it's a process where animals take in oxygen for do for get, for releasing energy inside their body isn't it and after this process of respiration a gas called as carbon dioxide is released out so after respiration there is a release of carbon dioxide now this carbon dioxide will be again used by the plant for photosynthesis so actually this carbon dioxide released after respiration and oxygen released after photosynthesis these two gases they balance each other in nature isn't it when one increases okay the other process will help in decreasing it now we will see what is it you see this is the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide during the process of photosynthesis the plants they will be photosynthesizing and they will be releasing oxygen this oxygen will be utilized by the animals for respiration after respiration animals will be giving out carbon dioxide so here this arrow indicate photosynthesis okay after photosynthesis oxygen is released out the animals will utilize it for for respiration so what is this arrow this is respiration so after respiration carbon dioxide is released out this carbon dioxide will be again utilized by the plant for photosynthesis so actually there is a balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in our nature photosynthesis and respiration these are the two processes which help in keeping the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in our nature 
and the forest will help in this process. If there is any imbalance in the amount of this oxygen and carbon dioxide, what will happen? If this carbon dioxide level increases in our nature, it will cause serious problems like global warming and all. Right now, it is a uh, it is it is a situation which we are facing, isn't it? The increased amount of carbon dioxide due to the decrease of trees. When there are more trees, the trees will be absorbing this carbon dioxide for doing photosynthesis. But when there is less number of trees, the amount of carbon dioxide will increase and there will be an imbalance of this oxygen and carbon dioxide in the nature. Okay, so the second use of forest is that they help in balancing the oxygen and carbon dioxide in our nature. Hence, they act as the green lungs of earth. Okay, yes. Now moving on to the third use of forest. The third use of forest is that they regulate our water cycle. You know forest it is a thickly populated region with trees. When rain comes and falls on the forest, this rain water will be peeping down into the deeper layers of soil. Okay, the, the plants will hold this rain water in between their roots and they will allow the water to go to deeper layers of soil. Thereby the water table will be replenished. Okay, now all these water table, all this uh, so water which is going into the deeper layers of soil will go and get collected as underground water. These underground water resources of different places will connect into different small streams. The streams will go and get connected into different rivers. Rivers will go and get connected into water, bigger, bigger water bodies like uh, ocean like that. It is going and connecting to bigger water bodies. Finally, what is happening? All the water which is coming down as rain is going into the underground water and these underground water resources are going and filling the bigger water bodies. Okay, for uh, after that what happens again from the bigger water bodies, from the rivers, ocean streams, from all these bigger water bodies, the water will be evaporated when there is heat from the sun. This evaporated water will again go up, it will be forming clouds and again it will be raining. So, forest help in regulating rainfall. If there is no forest, there is no peeping of water towards the groundwater resources. There will be no uh, recharging of the groundwater. The groundwater, if the groundwater is less, then less water only will be flowing to streams, rivers and all. And the whole process of this rainfall will be interrupted. There will be less rainfall. Okay, so forests, they help in regulating our water cycle. Just see this diagram. Uh, the rain is coming and falling down. Okay, the trees will allow, the trees will be using this rainwater and more rainwater will be going to the deeper layers of soil. They will be percolated towards the deeper layers of the soil. They will go and replenish the water bodies. Okay, from the water bodies again by evaporation process, this uh, rain, okay, will be produced again by the evaporation condensation process after evaporation all the uh, water vapor will go and form clouds in the clouds by the process of condensation again it will come down as rain now the plants will be transpiring remember transpiration process during the process of transpiration also lot of water vapor is released into the atmosphere this water vapor will also help in the formation of rain so, this is how the water cycle is maintained. Again, a cyclic process of moving of substances between living and non-living is happening here. Okay. So, water cycle is also regulated by our forest. That is the third use of our forest. Moving on to the fourth use. What is the fourth use of our forest? Our forest, they are the homes of certain tribal people. Those people who are living in forest. Okay, they are dependent on the forest for their life. Everything they are depending on the forest only. Okay, such people you call them as tribal people. And these tribal people, they are living in the forest. Hence, they know each and every part of the forest. They know in detail about each and every medicinal plant in the forest. So, they are having a, they are having lot of traditional knowledges about different types of medicinal plants in the forest. And all their basic needs, like what are the basic needs of people food 
shelter water medicines everything they get from this forest itself okay so for all their basic needs they depend on the forest hence these forest has to be protected then only the life of these tribal people will be protected or else their life will be in danger okay so forest they protect the life of tribal people also so right now we studied four uses of forest can you recollect them number 1 forest help in nutrient cycling number 2 forest help to regulate the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide thereby they act as green lungs of earth number 3 forest regulate water cycle and number 4 forest will protect the life of tribal people who are living in the forest okay so with these four uses we are right now winding up now we'll move on to the last topic forest is a dynamic living entity now why do you call our forest as a dynamic living entity dynamic means what dynamic means something which is growing something which is positive something which is full of energy full of life isn't it something which is going on changing okay so dynamic living entity forest is always full of energy full of life forest is always going on changing okay now how this happens it is actually again a cycle of events which happened it is not a single process uh, one by one so many processes are happening in a cyclic manner to help a forest to become a dynamic living entity so we'll start okay now first point just see forest you can see that the forest is hiring a great variety of plants you remember we studied it in the first video variety of plants like herbs shrubs trees everything will be found in a forest so the forest has a great variety of plants in it when the number of plants in a forest increase what will happen definitely the number of animals which depend upon the uh, plants what you call the mass those plants which dip, those animals those consumers which depend or which eat only plants are called as herbivores remember we studied so when the number of plants increases there is greater opportunity for food and habitat for herbivores when the number of herbivores increases definitely the number of organisms which eat herbivores that is flesh eating carnivores will also increase isn't it so there will be larger number of carnivores what happens these carnivores the large number of plants herbivores carnivores everything will help the forest to grow okay so the forest will regenerate and the forest will grow the forest will be full of energy and finally when these organisms die what will happen decomposers will act on these organisms and the decomposers will convert their dead remains into nutrients once again and these nutrients can be again taken up by a plant for its growth so what happens again the first process continues the number of plants a variety of plants increases by taking these nutrients more and more plants will grow again all the process will continue one by one like this hence you can call this is an ever ending process okay hence you can call the forest as a dynamic living entity hope the topic is clear so with this we are winding up today's class hope it was clear only a small session but you need to read it properly that's all so read your textbook properly for all this okay so study well have a safe time bye